Azure Data Factory with Dataverse, especially lookups, is way harder than it needs to be. But I'm gonna show you three ways to populate lookups in Dataverse. There are very few resources, and if you try to search for it, the results are surprisingly minimal. But here's how you can do it. I've got a SQL database here for manufacturers, so different companies, and then I have another table for outdoor equipment. And my lookup is on the manufacturer ID that points to the manufacturer table. Do you see how both of these have GUIDs? If your tables have GUIDs, amazing, use them or consider putting them on your table and I'll show you why. If your table doesn't have GUIDs, it's all right, I'll show you two other ways. Once you connect all your data sets, click the three dots, click new data set, select Dataverse and then SQL and put them all in here. Hit plus and create a new pipeline. There's an action called copy data. We're gonna start with our base table manufacturer and it's gonna sync to our Dataverse manufacturer table. You have to do an upsert, which means you need a unique key for the manufacturer table. I'm just gonna make my key the manufacturer ID GUID. Do you see here on my Dataverse manufacturer table, I have manufacturer ID, which is the unique ID that automatically comes with my table. And then I have manufacturer ID text, which is where I'll actually be storing this column. So the same data will be stored in two columns, but you'll see why. If I hop over into keys, you'll see that my other unique identifier column isn't here. That's why we have to create two. This value has to be unique and it'll let us use it with Azure Data Factory right back here. So now if I click refresh, there I have TOT manufacturer key, I'm gonna select that. And then if we go to mapping, I'm gonna do import schemas. This right here will let me map my SQL columns to my Dataverse column. If you click debug now, you're gonna get this error that the manufacturer ID is mapped twice because that's what we did. To make sure this behaves, come down here under additional columns and click new. And you could call it second manufacturer ID. And then underneath here, go ahead and select it and then type it into here. It'll give you a warning, but trust me, it works. If you don't, if you press import schemas, it will also appear in the dropdown, but I don't want to lose all my mappings. And then if we come down here to debug, all right, manufacturer is done. If we come up here and refresh it, we have some values here. Look at this manufacturer ID is A086. And then when I click on one of them, if we look up here in the URL, A086, it preserved the GUID we want. For outdoor equipment, we don't actually care about adding the GUID here because we only wanted it for manufacture. If we hop back in Data Factory, and I'm gonna add another copy data, but this time outdoor equipment. The name here, copy outdoor equipment. The source is going to be outdoor equipment SQL. And for the sync, let's pick the Dataverse outdoor equipment. Our alternate key is just the name of the outdoor equipment, each tool is unique. Click into mappings, new mapping, and let's pick the tool name, map it to TOT name. Obviously, if you click import schemas, this will be a dropdown. And back in our outdoor equipment table, click on columns, we're gonna map to the manufacturer lookup. So I'm gonna type in the logical name here, and then under my dropdown, select the manufacturer ID GUID. Final step is to click this little checkbox. So once this data succeeds in the copy, it'll move to this one. And let's click debug and see what happens. All right, we got a success here on equipment. So if we hop over here, I got my outdoor equipment and my lookup populated. So all that is option one. Option two is you might not have GUIDs and you're stuck with maybe using integers and that's your lookup. In this more typical case, there's two ways to do it. The first way, this method I originally saw on Andrea Pinillo's channel. She's got excellent videos, definitely subscribe to her. And what she does inside of Dataverse, our original SQL data, we have the SQL ID column. So inside of Dataverse, we would make that column and we're gonna migrate the data without doing the lookups. So in here, this manufacturer ID, that's a good, we don't have that anymore because our data model now has the SQL ID. So we're gonna delete that and we want a new mapping and this time it's for our SQL manufacturer ID, this one right here on outdoor equipment. There it is. And then in here, we'll select it as well. And now back in our manufacturer table, I'm actually gonna delete those other mappings that had anything to do with GUIDs. Instead, I'm gonna select the SQL ID. We can also delete that additional column down here. And now if I run this, well, first let's delete all of this stuff right here. And now if I run it, Great, it all worked. And in our system, you'll see that our SQL ID is populated for manufacturers and our outdoor equipment is populated as well, but the manufacturer lookup is blank. 
but the SQL manufacturer ID works. We need one more step. Obviously, none of this is that helpful to us. But if we come here to edit columns and then we go to add, we go to related, and then under here we open manufacturer, this is going to let us start to do a join on the two. So I'm going to select SQL ID and the name of the manufacturer. So we're already doing a join here. And then I'm going to click download a layout. So we're going to open this fetch XML and you could use a tool like Fetch XML Builder to help you with this, or you can cheat like me and hop here into ChatGPT, paste it, and say rewrite to use an outer join on SQL ID and SQL manufacturer ID. And now we're going to copy this code, paste it into a tool called Fetch XML Tester, and you'll see I now have this outer join. And you'll notice here, here's our manufacturers repeating. Here's our individual outdoor equipment. And then here is the GUID of our individual manufacturers. So now we can go update all our lookups. So I'm going to hop over here, select all of this. Back inside of Dataverse, let's click our copy equipment and click this clone button here. And what we're going to do is select the plus and have it go over here. And in this case, we are copying equipment as well as manufacturer lookup. Now under source, we're going to come in here and select our either of our Dataverse um, data sets. And we're going to click query. And in here, paste our fetch XML from earlier into here. And we can confirm it works by clicking preview data. Everything looks great. And then on the sync side, we're also going to sync to Dataverse. So we're going to import schemas, click new mapping, and down here, so here I've selected my manufacturer GUID. I tied it to the manufacturer lookup on the equipment table. And then I just selected the same tool name in both places just because that's my unique key. So now let's hit debug and see if this works. All right, and this one succeeded. And if we look at our data here and then we refresh it, we'll see that manufacturer is now populated. This is great. It's simple, but we're making this third API call, which is kind of annoying. There's a third way to populate lookups, and it's the most complicated. The final way to update a lookup is using data flows. Come down here to new data flow, and for add data source, we're going to select our SQL table, and we're going to select outdoor equipment. So this assumes manufacturers have been migrated. Next, we need to go to the plus and click something called derived column. We're going to make an extra column. This column, we're going to put in our lookup. And this is going to make more sense if I show you a Power Automate example. So in here, I have a flow. It adds a new row to outdoor equipment. The name of the tool is called test. And down here is our manufacturer. You'll notice for the manufacturer, I'm not doing by using the GUID of the individual manufacturer like this. Instead, I'm using the alternate key so I can just get in where I just put in the name of the manufacturer. If you don't understand what I'm doing, I have a whole YouTube video on that that you should definitely check out. But the key takeaway from here is if we go into peak code and you'll notice we'll have our tool name, you'll see we have our table name and then we have the name column. And then here we have our lookup and then we have at the end of it odata.bind. We'll come back to this. If I click done, and let's say I run this flow, and we go back to our outdoor equipment, and we don't see test, if we refresh it, there's test right there, and it's pointing to Patagonia. Let's do a similar thing. So we're going to use this right here in Data Factory. So I need to make this lookup. So I'm going to come down here, and under column, I'm going to type in derived lookup manufacturer, and under expression, click open expression builder. So the first thing I need is to do the second part here of TOT manufacturer, and then you put the whole thing in quotes, and then I'm going to select manufacturer ID here. By the way, the first person I saw talk about this method was Dennis from SDC Centrum. Great videos, especially on Azure Data Factory. Check out his stuff. Both of these creators are linked in the description. So in this case here, TOT name was the key I wanted to use. But in my actual table, I don't have the name of the manufacturer. I just have their SQL ID. So in here, I made a new SQL ID key, which is just looking at this right here. So I don't actually want this one here. I want SQL ID exactly how it's spelled right here. Notice the capitals. 
And also manufacturer ID is the GUID. That's not what I want. I want manufacturer SQL ID. And I'm putting quotes here, but if you're dealing with integers, you're not going to want the quotes. Trust me, my other video shows some of these issues. And then click Save and Finish. So I've selected my manufacturer SQL ID. I can click Refresh here, and that looks right to me. So I'm going to hit Save and Finish. Here's a pro tip. If inside of here you are not seeing the columns you want, like maybe you updated the database, if you click on Source here and go into Projection, you can click Import Projection, and you will get all the latest columns here. Next operation we need is something called the Alter Row. This one is just required in this process. You could do insert if, and basically this helps decide when a column or a piece of data needs to be inserted or not. What I mean by that is in all of our copy statements under our sinks, we have this upsert behavior and it looks at the key. And if the key already exists, it's going to um, not create a new one. It'll just update the rows. This thing is really smart. You can run it over and over and over, and it will keep inserting, upserting only if necessary. Versus this is kind of annoying, and we kind of have to tell it to. The problem is I haven't found a way for it to find out if the data was already created in Dataverse. So for this to truly work well, you need to move your data into Dataverse. And then you need to have a different job that, once that's done, updates the data in the SQL. So we would have a column here called like updated in Dataverse, yes or no. And then based on that, decide if um, we should be inserting or not. It's complicated. It's annoying. If you have a better way, please tell me and put it in the comment. And the last thing we need is a sync. So if we come into here and then click sync, I'm going to select my data set from earlier of outdoor equipment. And mapping doesn't let us like get our schema names from Dataverse. So I'm going to select these all, delete them, and then I'm just going to start over. So we have name going to name. I'm going to add one more. And then this one is going to be our derived lookup manufacturer. And in here, we're going to spell all of this out. So it's going to be T-O-T underscore manufacturer. And then the key part, we got to put at odata.bind. And once we're all done with that, let's hop back into our pipeline. And I came over here and made a new pipeline just for this. And under move and transform, I'm going to select data flow. And I just renamed this one equipment with lookup. And then inside of here, we are going to go under settings and then select our equipment with lookup. And then we're going to come over here and I've deleted all my outdoor equipment. And so now I'm going to click debug. And I'm going to warn you now, this is totally going to fail for you the first few times you do try it. Like there's all these things that can totally go wrong when you do it. So don't beat yourself up. For instance, here, the first mistake I made is I had SQL in all caps because I was following this right here, the schema name, but that's wrong. You need the logical name. All right, we're all set here. Then we hop into our outdoor equipment and refresh. There it is, and there are our lookups. If I'm being honest with you, I'm much better at SSIS. I usually use Azure Data Factory to organize my SSIS packages. So that's why this is a little sloppy. But if you have a better way, let me know in the comments. I would delete this video and make an even better video.